Today, I am going to be playing the uh, Blue Red Delver deck in Legacy. It is probably considered one of the best decks in Legacy right now, which uh, always gets me excited. I love my Delver decks. That is uh, kind of how I broke out onto the, the Magic scene, was winning it open with Grixis Delver back in the day. Decks made a lot of, lot of changes since then. Um, definitely got a huge hit by getting with Taxing Probe and Deathrite Shaman Band, but we picked up a new a couple new cards, and that's pretty sweet. And so we're going to be playing some more with that. I did make 16th in the uh, the Pittsburgh Legacy Classic with Blue Red Delver. <coughs> My um, friend and teammate Chad Harney, we played in the Swiss, and he browned me. He made top eight as well of the uh, Legacy Classic and wrote a guide on that. So I'll be referencing that today. Here, let me show you guys that real quick. Boom. Plug in the guide. Look at this. The complete Legacy Exit Delver guide. I helped him work on this a little bit. He uh, he kind of pulled me and Harlan Fuhrer and some thoughts, and we talked a lot about uh, Is It Delver. So I agree with some of the things he says in here. I don't agree with some of it, but either way, it's still a good resource if you're looking to learn more about Is It Delver. Like I said, my buddy Chad, head over to Hipsters of the Coast, one of the sponsors. But yeah, I'll be referencing that a little bit when it comes to sideboarding because I haven't played Legacy in a long time, whereas my buddy Chad has. Um, well, I say that, and I just played Legacy last weekend and did pretty well. And the deck felt strong. Um, I think the list I played needs some changes, so I've made some of those changes here. Like I said, I hadn't played in a while, so I just kind of took some generic advice from some of my friends and teammates. And some of it was good, some of it was not as good, but I'm going to talk about a little bit of that here shortly. Um, so, I guess we can start with the mana base. I've got this like strange split of fetch lands because, uh, you know, I guess it's technically correct to play um, the off-blue fetches. I've heard an argument that you're supposed to play Prismatic Vista over this Arid Mesa. I'm not quite convinced yet. I do like being able to fetch Volcanic Island with all my all my fetch lands. I feel like more often than not, I'm going to be fetching Volcanic Islands. Um, there's only a couple matchups where I don't want specifically Volcanic Islands. So, I think I actually do like the off-color fetches a little bit more than Volcanic Island. So, I'm a little more, okay, a little more than Prismatic Vista. So, I am pretty happy to actually have the Arid Mesa... Um, obviously you can see there's, um, eight, nine fetches, nine total fetches. You got eight blue fetches plus the, uh, the red fetch. And so, you know, four tarns. M it makes sense. But not quite the 2-2-2 two, two, two that Delver used to do, but you do need to be able to fetch basics. That is part of the power of playing blue-red Delver over something like Grixis Delver or Teamer Delver, is you get basics, which leaves you very wasteland resilient. So, pretty excited to... To leverage that, I didn't really feel like you needed the uh, the black or the green cards. They never really, like, I don't know, with the presence of things like Magmatic Sinkhole and Dreadhorde Arcanist, you just don't really need, you know, the powerful two drop in the form of Tarmogoy for, like, Gurmag Angler and stuff like that. Like, Gurmag Angler is also easier to kill because of Sinkhole. So, the basics are uh, a good addition to the Delver deck. Pretty excited. They were very good. Uh, two Volcanic Islands seems kind of low. I can see a third in some spots. Like, how many times do we really need the third island? So that is something I'm going to be look, kind of looking for in this league. I don't feel confident enough in that change to make it now, but I think there's a chance we want to cut an island, a basic island, over uh, for another Volcanic Island. And then we got the four Wastelands. We got the mismatched uh, mismatched arts, but we'll just zoom in on this one. Wasteland, Delver Staple, makes perfect sense. Um... So now this deck is warped a little bit to be very good with Dreadhorde Arcanist. This card is very, very good if you enable it and can turn it on, you know. It can be basically a two-mana Jace the Mind Sculptor where every turn you're brainstorming or you're preordaining, you're pondering. You're doing more than just drawing a card. You know, you're casting this very powerful spell. Or you could even be Lightning Vaulting, which helps a lot in racing situations because it basically makes Dreadhorde Arcanist have four power. Um... So that's kind of what you see is such a high density of cantrips. Normally you used to see Delver decks play like 10-ish or, you know, whatever. Like they used to play Probe, so I guess it was like kind of different. But in general, Delver decks usually played about 10-ish of the like cantrips that cost mana. Whereas here you see a higher. You see the full set of preordains, full set of ponders, full set of brainstorms. While the two first play sets make sense, the full set of preordains is kind of a concession to Dreadheart Arcanist. Plus, like I said, your lands being less likely to get wastelanded means you actually can't afford to spend more time cantripping because you're less likely to get wastelanded. Like a lot of times the play pattern is, you know, if, if somebody goes dual land cantrip and you're the Delver deck, you're supposed to just wasteland their land because they didn't commit to the board at all and you just kind of want to land check them, see if they have another land. So... You can afford to cantrip, you can afford to take that play pattern when you know you're not getting wastelanded because you played a basic turn one. So that's kind of how these Prudents fit really well into the deck. Um, set of Lightning Bolts makes a lot of sense. I mean, don't really need to convince you that that card's good, I don't think. Um, in fact, it's so good we're playing a basically strictly worse copy in every situation of Chain Lightning, 
Um, the Harlan Fuhrer was playing two Chain Lightnings. He, he suggested I go to a split with Magmatic Sinkhole, and I liked that a lot. There's a lot of Planeswalkers that need to die. Gurmag Angler is kind of a problem. The access to the Sinkhole was very, very relevant. So I really like that split. The split's really good. Um, like I said, used to be Chain Lightning. Not going upstairs is frustrating, but like in general, the vers versatility of Magmatic Sinkhole was definitely worth it. What's up, Sevdem? Um, then you see the 13 creatures here I have lined up. Um, you see the set of Delver Secrets. Um, one Grim Lava Mancer. Which makes sense. You don't really want a ton of Grim Lava Mancers with your Dreadhorde Arcanist deck because you, uh, you, they fight each other, right? Like this is eating up the graveyard, whereas this also wants to eat up the graveyard. Um, so yeah, but it is a very powerful effect. It is something that you probably want access to, and it does give you another threat. So we're pretty happy to have one Grim Lava Mancer. Dreadhorde Arcanist was a card that I don't. Know, I'm pr I'm kind of a naysayer on new cards in general. Um, when new cards come out, I tend to think that people tend to overhype them, and so to compensate, I tend to like kind of be very jaded with how I approach new cards. And people tell me something's nuts and it's a new card, I'm just like, eh, it's probably fine. Now people were ranting and raving about how good Dread Dreadhorde Darkness was. And I played with it in the tournament, expecting it to be okay. The card was incredible. Basically, I seriously felt if you ever attacked with it once, you were just going to win the game. Like whoever attacked with it first, the game ended. It's kinda of like a dark confidant, but even better. You know, instead of um Instead of us losing the life, they lose the life. The spell casts itself. It's just a better blocker. This card was incredible. I was just blown away with how good Dreadhorde Arcanist was in the Legacy Blue Red Delver Shell. And it basically lets you grind with a lot of the fair decks without having to put huge costed spells like Jason the Mind Sculpt in your deck. And that is a big argument for why I actually only like one True Name Nemesis in the main deck. That was a change that Chad made in his article that I didn't like because I didn't feel like I needed it as much. I felt like Dreadhorde Arcanist really gave me the staying power in the fair matchups that, you were, that I was looking for. Um, Young Pyromancer, this card is kind of the next best Dreadhorde Arcanist, which is kind of funny to hear after, like, you know, the card was so good back in the day with, uh, Probe and Therapy and all that. Now the card's just, like, not nearly as good. People are doing things like Plague Engineer, people are doing things like, I don't know, Ren and Six. There's just, it's very, very squishy, whereas this card is more resilient. This doesn't even die to Punishing Fire, whereas, you know, this obviously does. So this card has, like, maybe... I don't know, it has close to the same ceiling that Dreadhorde Arcanist does, where you just kind of take over the game, and it's not close, but... Instead of, you know, make, drawing cards and stuff like that and winning through that advantage, you're making tokens. And in general, I do feel like it is a little less good than Arcanists, which is why we play less of them than the total number of Arcanists. Um, and lastly, like I said, a Trinity Nemesis is still a very broken card, a card you're going to want access to. And uh, it's a little easier to cast in this Delver deck than others because we have basic sword lands with a likely to get Wasteland, which means we're more likely to have three, three mana. Um, and then last but not least, the uh, typical ca uh, counterspell suite you see in Delver decks, four forests, four days, two spell pierce. Don't really think I need to explain too much on that. Uh, the counterspell suite that Delver's been playing for years, the only questionables are spell pierce. And there's still a lot of things you want to counter that are non-creature spells because you have all these answers to creatures. Um, so still still makes a lot of sense. Really happy to see that counterspell suite. The, deck felt, the main deck feels very good, and yeah, we're going to be playing some with that and kind of walking through that. Moving on to the sideboard, a nice addition from Modern Horizons was Force of Negation. I was very impressed with the Force of Negation. I played against Storm, and it felt like I just having access to those more Force Wheels meant I could more consistently have just a Force Wheel in my opening hand, backed up by pressure, and I just really felt like I could have, you know, I, I had that mix more often. Uh, plus, it was like another copy of Force that I didn't mind bringing is against um, Miracles because you could hard cast it very reasonably in that matchup, and that, that's very relevant. This card being much easier to hard cast mattered a lot. And like I said, being able to bring it in against Miracles and some of these other fair decks where like you kind of want to force a will, but you don't really always want the card advantage, especially later, the hard disadvantage later in the game. Being able to just hard cast it was really nice. Um, another true name nemesis, this is for decks, you know, trying to punch and fire me out of the game or whatever. You know, anytime I'm trying to get more resiliency out of my threats, I'm going to want another true name nemesis. Card's broken. Makes a lot of sense. Only one Fluster Storm. I cut one from my... Uh, for my list that I played in the classic because I didn't really feel like I needed it with the force negations. I don't think I needed that many counter spells. And so I kind of shaved down on one of those um, and added a blue elemental blast, which is kind of funny because it's still a counter spell, but it's also a removal spell for Dreadhorde Darkness, which matters a lot in the mirror. A lot of times, all that matters in the mirror is whoever gets to attack with the Dreadhorde Darkness first because you don't want that to happen. And this has a lot of other uh, applications against cards like Ren and Six or you know, Colagon's Command, whatever. There's plenty of red cards in the format that you're looking to counter right now or, or destroy, and so I'm, I'm pretty excited to try a blue blast and see how that goes. Two Surgical Extractions, still a concession to Blackheart Reanimator, still a deck people are playing. Good against Punishing Fire, good against various other graveyard strategies, like if people are dredging or whatever. Gonna want, don't really want to leave home without at least some graveyard hate, even if you have things like Force Negation to kind of hedge for that. Um, so Surgical Extraction is a card that just kind of belongs in your sideboard, I think. <laughs> Um, Blood Moon, I went up a Blood Moon over a, I don't even remember, 
I don't I don't remember what I cut for the Blood Moon, but um, I wanted a second. Oh, it was a Pyro Blast. I wanted a second Blood Moon for the uh, for the greedy four color decks. Uh, did play against Leovold, and it felt like I couldn't really grind them out even with Dreadlord Arcanist. And so I kind of wanted to commit to the Punk Out plan a little bit more. Also gives me another card for lands, which I don't really expect to be super popular. But decks like lands and depths always exist, and if you're not prepared for them, they're going to catch you off guard. And they're going to beat the crap out of you. So two Blood Moons, something I was interested in. The first one was very good in Pittsburgh, so I'm happy to try the second. Um, a braid, another concession to D and D. Death and Tax is one of the most popular decks right now. Being able to destroy an artifact or a creature is like kind of what makes a braid your basically your best sideboard option. This looks looks sweet. Thanks, James Morton. Um, but yeah, a braid is one of your best options against uh, against death and taxes because it just hits everything you care about. It hits all the creatures, hits all the artifacts. Pretty pretty happy to have this card in my sideboard. It's just very very versatile. Uh, Pyro blast. And Red Elemental Blast make a lot of sense. This guy, I mean, this card's been good for Legacy forever. I shouldn't really have to explain. Playing a split because of Cabal Therapy. Um, and, yeah, I used to play three Blasts. Cut one because I don't really think we need that many Blasts because I don't think the Miracles matchup's even that bad. Um, I'm playing a sideboard Forked Bolt of the Electricery. The Electricery was fine, but I think Forked Bolt being able to go face is really attractive. And it's, like, a little bit better with uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist because you can flash it back. You know, maybe you can split the damage more often, whereas you can't overload the Electricery. Um, so, playing a sideboard Forked Bolt, don't really hate it. It's fine. It's not insane. Not a broken card. But I think it could be very uh, situationally, like, a lot better than Electricery. So, because you're very unlikely to hit more than one creature with an Electricery. But, notably, it does make it a lot worse against uh, the Epic Storm, Tess. Which I did play against in Pittsburgh. But I don't think we need that many cards for Tess. Like, we have a bunch of stuff we already want. And speaking of, we have Null Rod. Which is basically just for Storm and D&T. Um, it does have some other, like, random activation, like, applications, like, against Bomberman. Which is a deck people are playing a lot of right now for some reason. But mainly it's for Storm and for uh, Death and Taxes. Both of which have artifacts artifacts that they rely heavily on and are very good against us. So, Cyber makes a lot of sense. Pretty excited to try this list out. Let's go play some Magic. I will stop talking. Legacy. Okay, I won't stop talking, but I will stop sitting here talking about the deck. 100 play points. Let's set some play points on fire. Boop. All right. Let's play some Legacy. It's been, I don't know, it's probably been like a good three or four months since I put Legacy on stream, I feel like. It's been a long time. And last time I played Legacy, I think it was for um, uh, for a sub for, for a subscriber deck list. So makes a lot of sense that... I need to get back to playing some Legacy. So we're going to be playing, playing quite a bit of Legacy today. All blue decks too. You know how I roll. Not not doing any kind of... Not doing any kind of Blood Moons or Chalices or anything like that. We're going to be playing some blue decks today. All with hopefully acceptable mana bases. Alright, let's get this to where you guys can actually see. Hmm... <laughs> And I think I need to branch this out just a little bit. Yeah, that'll work. Would you like to play first? Hey, we already want we already we already accomplished step one, which is win the die roll. Um Sam doesn't have a threat or a cantrip. I'm really tempted to mulligan this. It has a removal spell, has some like has some permission, which is exciting. And like on the play, spell pierce can be really relevant. I just don't think this hand's gonna get it done. I could only have 13 slaps. Like, if we had a cantrip in this hand, I feel like it's a snap keep. But, like, we could easily just draw some, like, lands and some, like, interactive spells and die. I'm going to mulligan this. I think we could do better. This hand looks significantly better. And we're going to put one of these lands on bottom. Put a card on bottom. The London Mulligan Rule is now active. Pretty excited about that. Uh, we're going to put the Misty on bottom so that we have access to... Um, so we have access to our mountain. Um, let's just play an island and pass. This will let us daze if we need to. I don't know why we would need to, but if they're playing a combo deck, we might need a daze. <sighs> Verdant Catacombs. Don't like the look of that. Forest. Is this an elf? A noble hierarch. I don't think I want to daze that because I really... It's, it's, it's frustrating because we, we want to be able to daze... We want to be able to daze it all, and higher kind of means we're not probably going to be able to daze them. But I want to get this young Pyromancer in play. I don't know if this higher deck's going to have Wasteland, but I don't really want to chance it. 
I don't even know what they could be playing. Like, there's no way they're on Infect, right? Like, what are they playing? I don't know. I'm just going to grab Mountain to be safe. It's pretty free to do. It's not completely free to do, but it's pretty free to do. Hopefully, they try to jam some fat three drop on turn two. And if they don't, man, eh, whatever. Please jam a bunch of mana into one of your cards so I can daze you to the Shadow Realm. Please. Curtis M. Windswept Teeth. Fetch. Yes. Okay. Planes. Three drop, please. Swords. Damn it. All right. Dazed. That. This is like Maverick, I guess. This match was probably pretty hard. Volcanic Islands. Not what the doctor ordered. Uh, still quite a bit of mana short of sinkholing. Don't really want to brainstorms, but if we have to, we will. But I would like to get to my next turn before that happens. I feel like they were supposed to Thalia first to keep from getting dazed. Last turn, because they could have dazed. I guess I would have dazed the Thalia just to make a token. That's still pretty bad. Because they still just swords on their next turn. They would have a Thalia in play. Maybe this means they have another Thalia. Infect plays green fetches and basics, less so on Thalia and planes. Fair. What is this? What is four freaking mana? Green Sun Zenith for X is three. Could this be Leovold? I'm going to brainstorm in case this is Leovold. Because I really, like, I'm kind of cold to a Leovold right now. I'm just going to brainstorm. Oh, we can just daze it. That's pretty sicko mode. All right. Um, put this, then this back. Cast between onto my hand. You even drew a fetch land. I'm a god. Alright. So, I think I'm going to kill this Hierarch now. Because it's their only access to blue mana. Uh, one, two, three, four. I guess we can just... I want to keep the Brainstorm in case you draw an Arcanist. Who Die! It's kind of late to kill the Hierarch, but I'm kind of kind of hope that like their hand doesn't really do a lot. Like they have four cards left. I'm hope it's a lot of interaction. We can wasteland that. Oh, it's probably they're probably just gonna grab a knight. Damn. Well, we can't bolt that knight. Probably supposed to wasteland them. Kind of don't wanna. Makes this bigger. We don't really have a great plan for killing it except drawing true name anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of hope. Maybe I shouldn't have played this Wasteland then. My plan was to Wasteland them, but... Now they could... I mean, they could just make more mana. I'm just going to hold this Wasteland. Hmm. I think we're dead. I think they have out... We need us. Well, they're runes. Sure. I'm going to target for this bolt. Ramanap Excavator. Sure. Glad I did not wasteland them. Okay. What are you doing? Why would you sack that land? Okay, true name, preordain, deal. Uh, bottom one, I guess, top the other, island go. I wonder how we're going to lose this game. Here's another, already round one, we feel good for our mana base not being all, uh, all non-basics because they can just wasteland us out of this game. Instead, they have to just ramp themselves over and over again. Which, admittedly, isn't very good for us. Dryad Arbor, we're probably going to get attacked, I imagine. 
nine, sure. Kind of drawing to uh, turn him anyway. But we have another turn to find it, I think. Especially with that lightning bolt. Brainstorm. We did not find it. Okay. Um, can bolt that. They attack for eight. The Delver's not really doing anything. Neither is this days. Alright, so we're going to prude in. Put them both on bottom. Chain lightning. Shoot that. And hope to draw a turning next turn. That is our plan. It's not a good plan. Yeah, eight nine. We got to choose so we can actually take the dry arbor hit. Like we can turn him next turn, take a dry arbor hit, and then we can bolt the uh, dry arbor. Unless they have another dry arbor. Although wait, they could just no, they can't replay. Okay. True name. We are dead. F. All right. Let's see what Chad. Does Chad have Maverick on his complete guide? It's a bullshit complete guide if it's not on here. It's not on here. What's scum? Absolute scum. Alright, pretty sure we're going to want to treat this match like a DNT deck. So, we're going to want the Abrades. Going to want the Forked Bolts. I don't know if we're going to want this Null Rod. We're going to want this True Name for sure. I don't know if we're going to want these Blood Moons. Because they they obviously have a lot of basics. I don't really know a lot about this specific deck list. Pretty sure Null Rod's bad. Pretty sure Blood Moon is bad. Pretty sure Spell Pierce is bad. Uh, we have so much removal, too. This is kind of insanity. Uh, don't love Force and High Numbers. We're on the place. I think I want all my dazes. They did play around days pretty well. And we do have training that's coming in, so we'll cut eight days. It's not really calculated, but whatever. It's close enough. Let's get it done. This is this hand suffers the same problem that our opening hand last game suffered, where it just doesn't do anything. This hand is much better. Keep. Put a card on bottom. So we have turn one, fetch island, Delver. Then we can daze, so I guess we don't really want this upgrade right now. Done. Especially because we're fetching a basic island here, so we just want to be able to like have cantrips to set our turns up. Go. Don't gut shot me, or you will get me. Fetch. We're going to daze whatever this is. Yup. Difference here is we now we already have our threat in play. It's the difference between this game and last game. Alright, we're going to flip because these delvers are broken. Crap. <laughs> nope. Um... Let's go ahead and ponder. All right, I'll take it. Top. 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 Nope. Happy to see more threats. And we have a force to like back it up. So like we can now pretty freely force because we have this dread horde to re re uh, regain card advantage. So if they like Thalia here, we're probably going to just force it. If they scavenging ooze, we're definitely forcing it. If they GTA, what are we doing? Do we care about JIT? I don't want them to get a hit in with JIT. And I can't force every creature. I'm tempted to just force this. But, like, I wonder how much, like, how often we can just kill their creatures. And, like, we have a true name coming. Ugh. Or maybe not. Maybe we just have to fetch away the true name. Fetching away the true name, I would like to force this, I think. This is tough. This is very tough. Like, we can't... Like I said, we can't force every single creature. Legacy. What's up, Mason? Yeah, we're legacying. It's just been so long since I legacy, so I want a legacy today. This is tough. Am I supposed to force this, Mason? Would you force this? I feel like this is a pretty important decision. You 
Yeah, why not? I think I'm gonna force it. Risen Reef and Legacy when? Right. That card is not even probably like modern playable, much less legacy playable. It's probably not even standard playable. Yes. Alright, let's fetch a mountain. Play an Arcanist. Combat deck. Go. I think this just sets us up to be in a way, way better position. Even if they like Thali and me or whatever, like we're just, I don't know what they could have, but like we can set up to like bolt their creature and it's like disgusting. Thalia, okay. Dread or Darkness attacks into Thalia. And there's a land. Don't hate to see that. So I can ponder and then, I guess we just ponder and figure it out. All right, we're just gonna ponder and figure it out. Uh, I think I'm supposed to use the island, actually. Jesus. Um. Top. 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 No. All right. That was a good ponder. You don't hate to see that ponder. All right, here's a Grim Lava, man. Go. We're in a pretty good spot now. Pretty, pretty good spot. We even have a Chain Lightning next turn if they kill the Lava Mancer, which I assume they have to do. Four seems good because you don't have removal yet. Yeah, exactly, James. That was kind of the consideration. It was like whether or not we just like are very likely to cantrip into removal or not. How big is this thing? A 4-4? Four -four? That's frustrating. Tweeter, you got it. All right, well, I guess now this still works out. Because we're going to just shoot in like Delvoy two cards. Are they dead? They might just be dead. Alright, so I chain lightning them to seven. Can flash it back, but that takes all my mana. Alright, yeah, so I think I'm supposed to just like kill their creatures, right? And like attack with everybody. So we can just kill this. By using all of our mana sources. And then... That's five damage. That's so much damage. We attack them to seven. Shoot them to five. And all we have to do is untap. Alternatively, we could kill Thalia. Brainstorm. We could Love Mancer down Thalia. No, but that doesn't let us attack with the Dreadhorde Arcanist, which I really want to do. We can attack with Lava Mancer, so we can, like, kill this. We can deal three to this. Lava Mancer this down, deal three to this. Okay, never mind, that's so much better, right? We just get to kill both of these creatures? Okay. Make sure I have the math right. So we can... Lava Mancer this. Oh, we can Brainstorm, too. We can just do everything. Alright, that's disgusting. Yeah, all right. So we kill this. Delving this and this. Then we can brainstorm, chain lightning this twice. And that's pretty gross. I could just put them to one. But I think I'm, I'd rather just, like, kill their creatures. Like, I don't see any reason to, like, get aggressive and kill them when we, like... We have this Arcanist that's just going to grind them out. Um... I don't know. Like, yeah, what if they, like, wrath me or whatever, right? We need to know that I want to brainstorm. Like, we know there's a land on top of the deck. I don't even want that. All right, we're just going to touch. Boop. Red. Chain lightning this. Combat. Attack. Okay. Cast. Target this. God, see, look at this. Dreadwork guys is just broken. Look, <laughs> just watch this. All right. Yep, we can just block that, or don't, don't really care. They can't decide, they go to six, and now they're dead, currently, right? Where we just have, we just have lethal on board, but we have to get rid of the birds of paradise. I don't know, might have mistake with that, I don't think I did though. 
If they're cracking Horizon canopies, that is insanely good for us. And like, worst case scenario, once again, we're just going to brainstorm, then flashback a brainstorm. Like, we're just in fantastic shape. Unless they sort the Arcanist here, that would be frustrating. Sort the Delver? That is fine. I am not planning on winning this game with Delver Secrets. Oh, is this another one? Chalice the Wood on one. Brainstorm. Uh. Okay. Need to, like, wasteland me or whatever? Sure. Uh, I guess we just attack them. Do we Lava Mancer this down? I don't think we're supposed to Lava Mancer down the bird. I don't think the bird matters. I think we're just supposed to shoot them to four. Um. Go, I guess. Chalice on one is pretty obnoxious. What is this? A knight? Sure. Did not expect them to chalice me. And it does punish me a little bit for not getting more aggressive. Oh, I shouldn't have drawn that. That was really stupid. Oh my god, I should have fetched. But I don't have a stop in my upkeep. Well, that's frustrating. Okay. They can't swords my creature either. What's their plan for answering this Lava Mancer? They're just dead if I get to untap again. Like, I have a fetch land in play. I don't really know what the plan to win this game is. I assume they have maybe a gain life land or something. Don't really know. Thalia, oh, yeah, that is fine. That card has no text. Because I'm currently planning to just lava me at you twice. Alright. Exile, days, and force. There's a base. Uh, am I supposed to just like pass? I guess. I could throw this Delver in the graveyard just to like give myself two activations. I don't really know why I'm waiting. Sure. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> they just wanted to make sure I realized I was supposed to put a card in the graveyard. I don't understand why we kept playing. I was trying to play... There I was trying to play around um, them having some kind of game life land in their deck so they can't activate Knight of the Reliquary ever. So I was just going to like pass and wait for them to activate Knight. And if they never did, I mean, I would just activate, activate on instep. So, or activate on instep and then untap and activate again. So, I don't know. Okay, on the draw, I like days noticeably less. Um, chalice, we already have most of our answers to chalice. Maybe I want like another force since they're trying to chalice me. I don't know. Like force negation seems exceptionally bad. We already have all the answers to artifacts. Could bring spell pierce back in. That seems heinous. I can just rely on our two of brains and our forces to get us there. I guess. Makes sense. Here for it. Die, stupid Maverick. I hate Maverick so much. That deck is, like, never good. We've mulliganed every game. Mulligan. Keep this. We have a force for a chalice or whatever stupid rude two-drop they're going to play is. Yeah, like, Maverick is, like, one of those decks that people always touted about as, like, being good against Delver, and it wasn't. He said it was good against, like, Miracles. I guess not always Miracles, but, like, there was a point they thought it was good against Miracles, and it definitely wasn't. I'm keeping this hand. Uh, I guess they pithy needle light me on one. 
on turn one, then I feel stupid. I don't think they're going to do that. Uh, no need to put a stop here. Yeah, see, look, no one drop. This smells like a chalice. Days. Oh, man. Why couldn't they have played it on basic? They just, like, draw their basics all the time. I don't know. Preordain. I'm gonna pitch the force no matter what anyway. Oh, that is nice. Uh yeah, I'll take both of these. Uh top. I want the option to pitch the Delver. I don't think I will, but I want the option to. Honestly, I wonder if they chalice me if I just let it go and then abrade it. I might do that. Like if they spend their entire turn chalicing me, I get to like untap play Arcanist. I'm not going to Wasteland them. I can force this on tap Wasteland then play Delver. That seems a little good. Alright, that's... Yeah, I'm here for that. That play feels a lot better. Alright, play Wasteland. Wasteland you. Play Delver Secrets. Go. And now, even if they even if they chalice me, I still have the Abrade. So, pretty happy about that. If they folly me, don't really care. We got a Dreadlord Arcanist. Okay. Do you want to reveal this card? No. I'm not even sure I want that card. That's fine. Combat. In case they have Swords to Plashers, we're just going to attack first. Although I'm pretty sure they're swording our Dreadlord Arcanist if they have Swords. Go! Swords me. You didn't Swords me. You get an F. Wasteland has a target. Prelate. I imagine they're going to put this on one. We're going to shoot that and wasteland them. Yep. Okay. Well, everything's lining up about as well as it possibly can. And you don't hate to see that either. And so let's go ahead and just deal three to this. See you later, boy. And we're going to wasteland them to the Shadow Realm. I love Delver. <laughs> Holy cow, this is so fun. How do you not... Love this. Are you not entertained? Cast. Take that. Scry 2. Do we want both of these cards? I don't mind these cards. I have a Ponder next turn. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take these cards. Uh, go. This lets me, like, land Ponder, flashback, get another Ponder. Hopefully they're out of lands. Please have no more lands. Stop! <laughs> Oh no! That's okay. We have another we have another threat that we're happy to have. Celestial Purge? What format is this? Now they're gonna search up a Dryad Arbor? Fine. Alright, well I'm glad I topped that extra the, the Pyromancer here so we can like actually get something going. Young Pyromancer, Ponder. What do we love? We love all of this. Uh Top. I guess I'm supposed to draw the bolt first. Top. Top. Nope. So, like, if they chalice me, I can just, like, play the Young Pirates next turn and then throw the bolt away on the turn after just to get two tokens. If they don't chalice me, then, like, I can consider bolting, like, whatever I need to to maybe, like, try to get my creatures through. Imagine they're going to crack this. Knight. How big is that knight? It's a 5-5? Five five? Sure. Okay. Um, I don't see a reason to lightning bolt, so I think I'm gonna end up just pyromancering, and then trying to set up just like have infinite blockers, and like we're gonna go wide around the knight that goes tall. Crack that. Make your knight bigger. Makes sense. All the math checks out. Yeah. They've really crawled back into this. They just had a bunch of lands. All right, well, that Wasteland doesn't have targets. That Mother is going to be bolted to the Shadow Realm. Glad we held the bolt. We now have a easy target. Cantrip. No, that's a land. We know that. Um, So we have we still have, like, no good attacks whatsoever. Um, We can Delver. They can untap and Merit Lage me. So let's... 
just attack with Delver of Secrets. Could bolt them to five. Okay, so if they if they do have merit lage going on. Um huh. if they do have merit lage going on. Then what does this look like? So we're supposed to bolt. We're still supposed to bolt mom, right? Because we can we can get a block off with insectile. I think we're still supposed to bolt mom. I think I'm bolting mom no matter what, so I'm just gonna bolt mom now. And I'm gonna play this land in case they have tabernacle going on. Yeah, I should do that. Play land in case they have tabernacle. There you go. All my stuff makes sense. Every decision I made makes a lot of sense. I imagine they're gonna act like activate. Like I said, if they do have Merit Lage, I think we actually still get through for lethal. Haven't really done the math, but I'm pretty sure. Like, yeah, Dry Driver, Lage, Dry Driver, Dry Driver. Yeah, we get for one extra point, one extra than lethal. See, we have, you even have an extra point to spare. We're gods. We're just going to hope to rip off cantrips. Ace! Opponent, do you know you can register Brainstorm in this format? Why aren't you doing that? Yeah, that's no kidding. I don't know why anybody doesn't play Brainstorm. The card's also just so fun. They sacked and grabbed a scrubland. Are we about to get wrathed? I don't understand. What is about to happen to me? I feel pretty scared now. If they're grabbing another white source, this smells like a wrath to me. Like here I am thinking they might have like playable stuff going on, and maybe they maybe they're just legitimately Oh sure, that's fine. I still have lethal in play. I'm probably still just gonna attack. Hopefully draw a spell. We didn't. Alright. Nope, you die to this. They can block Sack Mazavith. Can they still die? Oh wait, no, they don't. They go to two because I, I lost the Delver. Whatever. They're still they're actually still dead. I still make that attack because we still have three tokens. So they're one neither of the quarry. So they are still currently dead. We did lose both Pyromancers. They lost Dryad Arbor. And now they're within bolt range, so like we can easily just bolt them out of this game. If they have another knight, that'd be kind of frustrating. Green Suns for Excess 2. What is this? Uh, Scoos? Scoozers? Yep. Now they can gain a life a turn. Or no, they can gain one life. They're still at a virtual 3. Alright, we have this turn to find a bolt. We've been through 1. We can't attack. Grim Lava Mancer. That's not shabby. Alright. The game goes on. How many creatures in the yard? There's a fair bit, I think. One, two. But they can only make this they can only make this so big. Uh, I'm gonna hold this land. Attacking doesn't do anything. That was a good that was a good card to have, opponent. That was a good card to have. And this still lets us draw draw to a bolt. So they can grab a green source, exile, gain a life to three. Gain his cradle? Oh, never mind. I didn't know they had that in their deck. All right, so never mind. They're just going to go to whatever life total they need to go to. And we're just going to hope to draw bolts. I don't know how many creatures there are. One, two. Do we have one? We don't even have a creature. They've sorted both of our creatures. All right, so it's all their creatures. One, two, three, four. They have four more creatures. Can exile three of them, go to seven. All right. We're just going to chomp this, I think. Taking nine is not something I'm very interested in. We're going to lose this game after all this time. All because we missed on that one turn. Like, if this was a if this was a cantrip, we would have won the game, I think. Because we would have made two more tokens. We could have attacked for lethal the turn after. Maybe I got too aggressive. I think we're about out of creatures. What, you got two more? Oh, yeah, you got one more. Dreadhorde Arcanist. You don't hate to see that. Hmm. Okay, that gives me a lightning bolt. So I currently have seven points. They're going to go to eight.
We don't have a lot of turns left to get ourselves out of this. They've also drawn running heaters. Another night was a great draw. What do they have? They have one creature, right? Yeah, none of them are mine. Knights are ten tens. Grab a Savannah. They draw another spell. This is insanity. <laughs> hey, Teddy. Thanks for the host. Oh, my God. <laughs> sure, dude. Oh, our opponent has drawn so well. End my misery. All right. Target you. And they can gain one more life. And vote for no man permanent share or whatever that. They can go to five. We can bolt them. They're still they're still within double bolt range. So we can hit a bolt this turn and win this game. I think blocking doesn't actually do anything, right? I don't think blocking actually accomplishes anything, so I'm not going to. I'll take seventeen. I'll go to two. Right now, wait, are they just dead? Did attacking like that just kill them? Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't understand they're not dead. Oh, they can target with the with the green. So yeah, we have to find, uh, we just have to find a natural bolt. That's fine. I was like, what? I don't understand they're not dead. Scavenger is actually actively very good. Oh, wow. Well, that's a pretty good one. That is a not bad one. Okay, so I guess they're dead. Boop. Boop. Uh, combat. Well, look at that. We luck sacked our way into winning anyway. Nice Maverick deck. Drew close to literal perfects. Okay. Don't really think you had to attack with that other knight. Okay. Okay. Taste it. Dreadlord Arcan is so broken. <laughs> Got him. Well, that was a really close game. That was a, that was a true Delver game right there. We're like, they kind of began to stabilize. We got to punk them out with lightning bolts. Just like these razor thin margins where we win. You love to see it. You love to see it. How's it going, Teddy? Ace, you're great. <laughs> you should have all these great opinions. I got it. <laughs> you got the I got it hand. I got it. <laughs> oh. Taste it in the Chad. Poor Chad. Oh. That was a fun game. That was a lot of fun. I was really mad there. I was about to lose that. Because I feel like in the beginning of the game, all our stuff lined up perfectly. And I was like, okay, yeah, we should just be great to win this game. And then they drew like... I don't know, two or three runners in a row. And I was like, oh no. Like, this is no bueno. We're probably about to lose. And they had, like, the scoozers. Yeah, it was just bad. I still, I still don't regret that young Pyromancer attack. Like, it felt kind of loose at the time. And I was like, like afterwards, after I did it last, the Pyromancer was like, was I supposed to do that? And I was like, I mean, they are still dead. But, like, I think I should have thought about it longer. Than just like jam, but I really, I really took the masses for blockers approach. This hand's great. I don't know why I'm thinking about it. I'm tempted to spew this ponder, just to kind of get something in the graveyard for Arcanist. Also, just like maybe find more blue cards and like set up our draws so we know how to use these fetch lands. But at the same time, I kind of don't want to, so I'm probably not going to use this ponder. Could find a daze. But if you find a daze, I'm not sure I want to use it. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna not cast anything on turn one. I'm just gonna play Fetchland to pass. But I play this Arid Mesa. Make them think we're like miracles. Give them. The hell is my thanks for my two people raid? What do you mean? I said thank you. And you, you actually hosted me, you didn't raid me. For what it's worth, Teddy. Learn your Twitch. Why are we waiting on my opponent to make a decision? Have they mulligan? Oh, they're mold of four. Oh, I understand now. Bonds is considering not playing this game at all. 
That's very fair. That's really fair. No, opponent. Decide if you wish to play this game or not. I wonder if we're about to get, like, I don't know, turn one combo. Like, maybe because of the London Mulligan, the return of the London Mulligan roll, they're like, we're going to get him. We're going to get him. Going to kill him on turn one. But I don't think they would take this long if they had a kill on turn one. Like, they've been taking for a minute or two, so I, I, I can really see their combo deck, right? Like, if, if they concede here, I'm just going to board in, like, Force of Negations and maybe the Fluster Storm clicks a bit. Because even still, like, that's good in case they are a fair deck. Those cards are still, like, reasonable-ish. Like, I'm going to be have way too many Force Wheels in my deck. But, like, come on, the card's not that bad. And then, like, if they're a combo deck, it's just, like, perfect. We, we, uh, we sideboarded perfect. We're gone. Oh. Come on, opponent. Make decisions. Don't make me sit here the whole time. I'm streaming. I want to play Magic. Oh, gosh. While we wait, is anybody in the chat going to be going to any opens anytime soon? I believe Worcester is next weekend. Will I be seeing anybody there? It's standard, so probably not. I feel like most of my audience doesn't play standard. I have to because the SCG tour, but, like, I feel like most of the people that watch me don't watch me for standard. So, I, I guess I'd be more likely to see people in Philly, which is my birthday weekend. This is the worst aspect of MTGO. I very much agree with that. Like, I wish... I wish we could, like, I don't know, I wish, like, Modern existed on Arena and Legacy existed on Arena. Because Arena is obviously the better platform, right? Like, if all the formats existed on both, everyone would just play Arena. But they don't, and so we have to, like, play this on Moto. They did reduce the uh, the timeout, I think, to, like, five minutes, though. So if you just, like, are AFK for five minutes, I think it concedes is how it works instead of ten minutes. Which is good. That helps the streamers out a lot. Um, I think that came with the, this uh, most recent Moto patch. Columbus! I will obviously be in Columbus. That's going to be a good one. All right, they've decided to play Magic. I'm going to play Air Basin. Wait, did they mold a three? They mold a three. What the hell? Why are we playing this game? Ancient Tomb. Chalice on one. No, thank you. Do I even force this? They have nothing else going on. Like, at all. We can just, like, play Pyromancer and force their next thing. Is that insanity? Is it insanity just like want to play Pyromancer or play Pyromancer and just force the next thing? They have no. Come on, we're just gonna force this. Like we're just it just makes all of our cards better. Like there's no reason to give them a chance in this game. Island, mountain, pyro, go. So they're mulling for Chalice of the Void. Strange. They should have thought not on two. I guess that's what you do when you lend a mulligan that low. Sure. You got it. Okay. I mean, we're just going to make a bunch of tokens. That's what we're going to do. Days. That's not a bad one. It's not a bad one at all. You don't hate to see it. Deck. B. Aggressive. B. E. Aggressive. Could have played Arcanist there, but I just don't think it's good. Hopefully they reality smash and I just daze them. That'd be super nice. Brainstorm. Don't hate to see that either. Arcanist. What are you doing, opponent? Why are we still tanking? Attack for a million. Make their ancient tomb hard to tap. And then we're going to make four tokens. These spells say make two tokens. For free. And for one. I wonder if I just put them to dead on board. Can I? Four tokens. Eight. Nine. We have nine. Now we're one short. Dicks. It does mean if they tap their, anci uh, tap their ancient tomb, then we have them dead. Which is kind of nice. Days that! <laughs> Boop. Boop. Uh-oh. Or would you like to pay? Come on, it's a low, low cost of two life. That's it? That's all it costs? It only costs two life to keep your old Jossie Displacer. That's not very much at all. It's in fact very little. Pequeño. No, Pequeño is down, right? No, it's small. It is small. 
Un poco. SG Dallas is in August, I think. I'll be there. Dude, SG Dallas is going to be sweet. Oh, they just conceded instead. What? But the opponent, you had everything. You had Chalice on one. You had Chalice on one. And an Eldrazi displacer. That's so many things. <laughs> Opponent, where are you going? Opponent! We are playing such good magic. I don't understand. Your deck's supposed to be broken against Delver. I have 24 one drops. And you had Chalice on one. Where are you going? Oh. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, that's so gas. They just conceded. I can't believe they just conceded. That's so, so sick. <laughs> Who plays with Drowsy Displacer in Legacy 2? What the heck? Whatever. Bonds, Bonds is on another level. They're playing all kinds of different... I was not ready for the kind of magic they're playing. They're on the, the Mold of 3 concede plan. Yes, I'd like to play first. Uh, sure, I'll keep this. We've, have we won every die roll? No, we, we lost the other die roll, right? We lost the die roll last match. The options are hold up spell pierce, commit to the board. We are going to commit to the board. Delver of Secrets. Go. Let's see what our opponent is on. What are they doing? DNS solver. Urborg, right. There's a lot of fair and interactive magic going on today. Would you want to reveal this card? No, I would not. I would like to send them to the Shadow Realm, please. To the Shadow Realm. Goodbye. Have a nice day. And now we get to hold the spell pierce for free. Cost me nothing. All right. I assume the Depths is their other land. That is my guess, is that Dark Depths is their other land. I think that is a safe assumption. I would like to reveal this card, yes. It's unfortunate I have to reveal days, but it's at least a time walk and we can brainstorm it away later. Uh, let's attack for three. And we are, with this added days, going to play a Dreader Darkmist. I don't think they're a Wasteland deck. Um, I'm willing to risk it because they're wastelanding me. I think that aggressively favors me. So we're just going to grab a Volcanic Island. If they go score to me, I have targets! Pew, 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 pew. Alright. Deja. What is this? Daze it. Should I daze this? What do you think? Should I daze this? kind of want to daze this. I'm not going to daze it. I'm just going to hold the daze. Draw. <laughs> You don't hate to see it, chat. You don't you don't hate to see it. I'm just gonna waste on them again. Then I'm gonna brainstorm. Might brainstorm first. Yeah, let's just brainstorm first. Find some bolts and stuff. Oh yeah. How about two more wastelands? <laughs> okay. Put this back. Put this back. Uh yeah, let's just wasteland them again. Put your lands in the graveyard. I like wastelanding depths as early as you can. I used to like holding it. Just to like, well, I didn't like it. I tried holding it, and it is bad. Holding it is very bad. More than happy to cast this. Pyromancer. Okay. Put back land. Wasteland. Take your damage, and we have spell pierce still. We are on the offensive here. Plan next turn is to Young Pyromancer plus Wasteland. They can grab a basic with this, but I assume they're going to have a non-basic at some point that we can Wasteland. Opponent, what are you doing? What are you doing? We're having fun. We're playing magic. This is magic as Garfield intended. Win 1-0 is a good feeling. That's factual. Why oh, 3 2 with Mardu? Recommend watching round 4. Had a salty pyro player encounter. Oh, no. Hey, look. Is this something that's going to get wastelanded? 
You don't hate to see it, chat. You don't hate to see it. Alright, we're going to play Empyromancer. What are you doing? Why are we setting it? Okay. Okay, can I please play my own Pyromancer? Crop rotation. So we just double daze this, right? Double daze then wasteland them? Alright, yeah, fine. So days, days, wasteland. I don't know what they're doing. I don't really care. I just wanna I just wanna I just wanna kill all their lands. Days this. Picking this up. Look, grab the volcanic island. We're rewarded for it. See ya. No lands. <laughs> Taste it. <laughs> Oops, no lands. Oh, where'd all your lands go, opponent? They're gone. All your lands are gone. <laughs> How did this happen? All right, I want at least these cards. I may want more. We need to figure it out. I probably want Surgical. This may be too much. Let's see what Chad wants. What does Chadley want? Miracles. D&D. &D. Oh, I can't believe they had no lands. <sighs> okay, that was pretty mean. Delver, Delver can be pretty mean sometimes, but man. When it's against decks like Depths, you just can't help but be excited about it. You can't help it. That <laughs> This opponent maybe had a family. They maybe once had a family. That is true, Teddy. However, that family, I don't think that family, that family's interested in them anymore. All right. Uh, what sucks? Sinkhole seems depressing. I want to NASCAR. We just want to go as fast as we can, I think. I think there's even merit to this. There's merit to this. There's merit to all these cards. I've brought Flusterstorm in before. Flusterstorm has targets. I just don't know. I don't know. All right, what's a mopey and bad? I'm not in love with Arcanist. I won't lie. Arcanist, this matchup seems like it doesn't very really kill very quickly. It doesn't even really do anything we're interested in. We're on the draw. Cut some dazes. I think we should have better options. I'm not in love with Trinity Nemesis. Don't really ever want to tap out to cast it. Um... Spell Pierce versus like Flusterstorm versus Preordain seems like a hard decision. Um, I'm gonna cut Chain Lightning. I think I'd rather have the Instant Speed one. Maybe like a Spell Pierce. Lightning Bolt's also not great, but I really like how like quick we can like it's cheap, it kills them quick. I think I'm gonna do something like this. I don't think this is insanely well sideboarded, but I don't think it's actively bad. Is Chain Knight and Grim Lava Mancer good enough? I think Grim Lava Mancer as a one mana threat is good enough. Like, it's not insane, but oh. Is this hand good enough? You just like Blood Moon that we just like Pyromancer on two, Blood Moon them on three on the draw? Like, these bolts are depressing. What did my opponent do? They kept seven? I'm going to keep this. I think there's a chance they try to do, like, the Bob strategy and, like, try to, like, be a little bit more, like, interactive in this game. And so I think I'm going to try this out. If it ends up being bad, it ends up being bad. But it seems hard to mulligan this. Like, especially if we're just getting discarded. Like, it's very discard resilient. Like, if they duress me here. Like, okay, cool. I have multiple copies of everything. Like, that is fine. Underground C Pithing Needle. Sure, I assume they're naming Wasteland. No matter what, I don't think they're naming Arid Mesa, which is fine by me. That fetches an island. So, let's... In case they have another Pithing Needle, I feel incentivized to play this. But I, I want to fetch an island. So, I'm actually just going to play Arid Mesa. Now, if they played our Confidant on turn two, we just bolt it. We have the bolts still in our deck. Lots of bolties. 
You love to see the bolts. I wonder why they have blue. Maybe we'll find out, but I just have legitimately no idea why they have blue in the deck. Mountain. Well, I was going to fetch the mountain. Apparently now I'm not going to fetch the mountain. Uh, fetch. Volcanic. Fetch. Is land. There it is a land. We'll play young peasy. Young Peasomancer. Okay. Your turn, opponent. Hopefully you don't kill me. I'm hoping they think I have permission. That way, like, they don't do it. Like, ah, oh, see, look, I have nothing. Look, what is this? Dark Confidant. Merp, derp. Trophy me. All right. Yep. Ireland. Okay. Okay. And... Well... Kind of feel incentivized to surgical. Just kind of see what's going on. Me, I don't know. Just gonna blood moon him. Just gonna moon him. Boop. Blood moon. Here's a blood moon. Blood moon. Fetch, grab, forest. Uh, not forest. You can't grab forest. Grab, swamp. Oh, you are conceding the game. Wow. <laughs> Wow. See, Blood Moon's great. Who doesn't want to play more Blood Moons? This has been a wild league. Big Monkey, what's up? What time does the MB announcement come out? What is the MB announcement? Modern Ban? I think it's like next Monday, right? I think it's next Monday because it's always the Monday before set releases. And I think that's the last ban announcement before Barcelona, right? Or whatever the Mythic Champion the Modern Mythic Championship is. Yeah, if they named Aaron Mason, it was it would be very, very spooky. Yeah, this coming Monday the eighth. Oh, time? Um like one o'clock. I think my time it's like noon, right? It might be like noon eastern, so eleven my time. Noon Eastern sounds like that makes sense. Which is like what, like eight? I don't know. Oh, is it ten Pacific? Oh, that sounds like that might be right. Is 10 Pacific, 12 Eastern? I mean, it's it's still going to be for a while. Why does it matter what time? Like, it's going to be sometime around noon. I guess, like, by noon, no matter what. Probably no matter where you live in the United States, it's going to be it's gonna be up. This has, been a, this has been a quick league. Drake, please. I just want to learn more from Blue Red Phoenix expertise. How do you feel about Sinkhole? Sinkhole seems fine. I don't like Sinkhole, especially in Aria Heavy. I don't know. I don't, I don't really like Sinkhole, actually. I lied. I thought I liked Sinkhole, but it's just like... I don't really like the reliance on the graveyard. Like, I like being as low on graveyard cards as possible, and I personally play Pyromancer Ascension, so if I'm playing Pyromancer Ascension, I don't really want Sinkhole because it fights the Pyromancer Ascensions. And it's just for not that not that much value. Like, there's not a lot of Planeswalkers I'm looking to kill. There's not even a lot of five toughness creatures I'm trying to kill. Like, Flame Slash does the trick and is way better against um, humans. And even the Mirror, if you're trying to kill a quick Thing in the Ice. Like, if they go Thing in the Ice on two and your removal spell is not Flame Slash, it is instead Magmatic Sinkhole, you're very unlikely to be able to kill their Thing in the Ice before they're going to be have a chance to flip it. And I, that's just kind of unacceptable to me. This is a lot of creatures, especially for the draw. I think I'm actually going to bowling in this hand. This hand looks like something that would be keepable, but it just, like, doesn't do anything. It's a lot of the field. I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep it. Like, it's good in the mirror, right? Like, we have Delver on one. Like, we have Lightning Bolts. I think I think this is at least worth thinking about a little bit longer. This is good against Death and Taxes. It has a Lightning Bolt, some creatures. Maybe it's fine against Death and Taxes. You don't like Lava Dart either? If you're not playing Aria Flame, I think playing Lava Dart's a waste of your time. Like, the card is just not a modern power level card at all. You'd rather have Gut Shot. This is tough. I'm just going to keep it. There's not that many decks I don't want it against. Most of them are combo decks. Although, if it is a combo deck, we are very dead. But, eh, maybe not. Maybe when they see Delver, they'll be shaking in their boots. They're going to wait to combo off until they have a better hand. Sinkhole's a board card? Yeah, if I was going to play Sinkhole, I'd play it my, my board. No, like, I think it's like a reasonable board option. Uh, I don't know 
what you're doing. So we're just gonna play Island Delver. Island Delver. This way I don't expose myself to Stifle. If they're playing Teamer Delver for whatever reason. That's something that people have been trying. I think this is most likely to be Miracles just because they led on Flooded Strand, but I'm not gonna obviously put them on Flooded on uh, Miracles until later. Oh god, Sneak and Show. Are they really gonna jam into Delver Go? Are you kidding me? Whatever. Let's make sure you have something. Hopefully they're not. Hopefully they're just jamming because they think it's gonna get countered. Grizzle Brand. Okay. Maybe they'll draw 14 cards and die to a lightning bolt. They did not. Opponent has successfully realized that they do not need to do that. Okay. Well, that was frustrating. All the blasts are great. Surgicals are acceptable. Just surgical all their threats. And we can, like, surgicals are getting a lot better when you have Dreadnought Darkness in your deck because you can just, like, flash them back immediately. I want Blue Blast. I want Flush Storm. I want Force Negation. There's even merit to Abrade because they oftentimes play Defense Grid, but we're not going to Abrade. I don't think that that is something I'm interested in doing because I already have a lot of cards for this matchup. Gotta go, gotta go. Primates are an Arcanist. I like both of them. I think I like Arcanist a little less. So we're going to shave one of those. Spell Pierce is great. Brainstorm is great. Delver is great. Chain Lightning is depressing. Okay, so I have three cards I need to need to cut, and I don't really know what I want to get rid of. Uh, not in love with a bunch of cantrips. I think we can shave like two ish, um, just because we're not really gonna have a lot of time. I mean, on the play we're gonna have a little bit more time. Also, want to shave like two bolts, so maybe we can keep a preordain on the uh, on the play, and we'll shave we'll shave the preordain on the draw, and like bring in like maybe out a braid or something. <laughs> I think I like this. This is very this is very like quick and loose sideboarded. But bringing in more forces is sweet. What cards do you think will be banned in Modern? I'm sure everyone watched LSV's analysis video, but didn't mention looting. What do you think? I think Bridge is the, the ban that makes sense to me. I think banning looting is kind of a mistake. It's, like, not really that broken. Like, looting is only broken, like, in decks that are already kind of broken, like Dredge and, you know, Bridge Fine. Whereas it enables a lot of other pretty cool decks, like Bardu Pyromancer, like um, Phoenix, Train... Um, it just like enables a lot of other like pretty reasonable modern decks that are pretty sweet to have around and so i think that banning i guess we don't even know if the blue blast is good huh because i didn't see sneak attack maybe i'm not supposed to have it in my deck yet yeah whatever we're just gonna hedge um so yeah i think banning banning looting i think is a mistake i would not really want them to ban looting because i like phoenix so much and so like i'd be really sad if they banned my deck and especially because it'd be like the third deck that got banned <laughs> Of mine, although when you play this long, it just makes sense. But I don't know. I think I think banning, I think banning Hogak is also reasonable. Like I think the altered dimension thing gets a lot worse without Hogak. But I don't know. I think they should ban. I think they should ban Bridge from below. I think that card is the most egregious. This hand is very good. Keep has the best card in the matchup. All you need to know is Delver Secrets is the best card in the matchup. Multiple forces this is kind of nice. Boop, boop. And like, we get to slam our turn two Young Pyromancer. It's going to be kind of nice. And, like, it's nice that Bloodmoon's bad against this version. So, like, Bloodmoon used to be one of the best cards you could sideboard for a dollar because it's just another thing you have to, like, counter. Whereas, like, that's not the case in this version. You can just, like, you know, obviously have basics. So, Bloodmoon's just, like, kind of bad. Looting wasn't bad. Not, like, it's the card's fault people built a deck that make the downside a benefit. I mean, te <laughs> you know that's not how the argument works. Because no, no card is, like... I guess inherently in and of itself broken, right? It's it's always everything around it. Like Ancestral Recall didn't know that people were gonna play Moxit and stuff like that. You know, I'm just saying, like you can always make this, this argument, but I don't know. Looting is looting at least requires like you to do some interesting deck building decisions, I think. And like there's a legit merit to playing other looting decks. Whereas if you're playing Bridge from Below, like what else are you doing? You're gonna be bridge mining. If you're playing Hogak, like maybe you can play in Dredge, I guess. But like you're gonna be bridge mining. So like I think, I think, I wasn't originally sold on the Bridge from Below ban, but I think the more that it, time has gone on, I'm a big fan of it. 
What are we doing? We're just passing. Okay, well, I'm gonna wasteland the shit out of you. Spell? <laughs> you don't you don't hate to see it, chat. Alright. Yeah, well, let's let's send this guy to the Shadow Realm. If you get the Wasteland Sneak and Show ever, you're just in an insane position. They cantrip will probably daze it. Oh, they didn't even cantrip. Alright. Cool. We get to hold it for forces and stuff. I wanted to play the Pyromancer, but that is way too tempting to pass up. They probably have another land. That is fine by me. This this board state is exactly what I want to see. City of Traitors is your next land? Dog, this is not going to go your way. Lotus Petal. Alright. You know about it days. Defense crew. Is it reasonable to daze this? Hmm. Maybe we force pitching the daze. Nah, we should force pitch force, right? Should we even force? All these things are the questions I ask myself. We don't have another wasteland. I feel like dazing it kind of makes sense. Like they have to crack their pedal. Maybe they don't have another pedal. They can also just like land. Eh, I'm just gonna force. I'm not gonna take the chance. I'm gonna exile this force too. Force back. Okay. Make them sack their pedal. Just make their mana worse. They can still obviously play land, and if they have show and tell, they get to do show and tell things, but. Oh no, they let it resolve. They thought I was dazing the force. Or maybe they actually just were okay with it happening. I don't really know. I doubt that they were okay with it happening. We drew a spell, Pierce. You don't hate to see it, chat. You don't. You don't hate to see it. That is not something you hate to see. Well, that means we're never playing this pyromancer. This is why Delver's so broken. Look how this pyromancer never got cast, even though like we were on the on the play and like look for sure like it was gonna get cast. It just didn't. Sure. It's fine by me, big dog. Well, now it's gonna get cast. Because we need to turn the heat up on this clock. Boop. Could have could have brainstormed for a wasteland. I don't really like it right now. I think I just want to turn the clock up. I think that like that is a lot, a lot better of a plan. But hey, if we die, we die. It'd be like that sometimes. I just don't think they have that much that much, that many lands. Like, they've basically wastelanded themselves twice. Normally when I when I bring in Besage, I actually cut city I actually uh, cut city of traders. That's fine. You can ponder. Force negation it. Oh yeah, I should have force negation instead of force willed it. You're right. I literally the life total didn't matter at all, and I'm used to casting force of will, so I was just like, yeah, force it, pitch the other force. So I just lost the life I didn't need to. I doubt it's gonna matter, but if it does, you got me. I don't understand how they're planning to ever win this game. Like, they threw their pedal away to cantrip, whereas they, like, didn't want to throw it away to this daze. I don't really, I don't really understand. Nothing makes sense to me at all. Now that we've seen defense grid, though, we are going to bring in some number of days. I mean, some number of our braids. Jesus. Probably over, I don't know. Maybe another, on, the can, on the draw, I think I want to cut a cantrip at least. So they can play land now. Oh, they're just going to concede. Okay. Begin sideboarding. So yeah, we're going to cut at least one preordain for an abrade. I don't know how many abrades I actually want. 
It was kind of a pure name. Could cut an Arcanist. Arcanist is freaking glacial. I do not like Arcanist in this matchup very much. But I, I think I need threats. Ah! I can cut a lightning bolt. I don't know what I want to do. I, I just don't know what I do. I really don't want to cut Preordain. I want to cut at least one for an Abrade. I don't know where I want this other Abrade to go. Pyromancer is better than Arcanist because it attacks more. Like, attacks more damage in this matchup. But I think we need threats. I've already cut two threats. I don't think I can cut more threats. So, we cut a lightning bolt. Yeah, if they have defense grid, I don't think they have the uh, stupid creature, the 0-3 or whatever. So, we're going to bring in another Braid. The Braid's pretty bad. The Braid is really bad. I don't want that many Braids. I lied. I want to keep the Bolt. Near the 5-0. <laughs> uh, what are we supposed to do? This Bolt of Braid thing seems incredibly marginal, but I feel like it matters a lot. I don't know. We're going to try it. We're going to try it. We're going to see what happens. Hopefully we don't die. What do you think of Phoenix's places after the London Bowl is official and a banning happens? Well, obviously it depends on the banning, right? I think just the London Bowl is going to make a big difference for Phoenix. I think, like, a lot of the power in the deck came from, like, you didn't have to mulligan to your broken cards. You could just keep basically every seven. And, like, that is something that Phoenix, like, the new mulligan rule is not something that Phoenix gets to leverage a lot. And the mulligan rule is very relevant. Um, I don't think it's going to make Phoenix, like, unplayable, but it may not be as head and shoulders better than everything else in the format like it was before, which is fine by me. I, would, I wouldn't mind Phoenix being a little more on level, power level with the rest of the format because that means they're less likely to ban it. So assuming it survives the Hogak banning, like, I actually think that, like, Phoenix is going to be a good in a good spot as long as it, you know, doesn't get banned out going forward because, like, it's just still very good deck. It still, like, gets to leverage the mulligan sometimes and, like... You just have more real games of Magic. I just think it's going to be so much better. So, in short, I think Phoenix gets worse in compared to, like, how it is in the format now. Like, I think, like, let's say the rest of the format, like, Phoenix. Like, I think it becomes, like, Phoenix, the rest of the format. You know, I guess you can't really see that. But, like, it becomes closer. Uh, here playing Blue Red Delver, just talking about, is it Phoenix? Um, this hand is great. Right? This hand is just good. Like, missing a threat is always kind of frustrating, but I think having Dave's spell pierce, like, as long as we don't get turn one, like, we're just in such good shape. And, like, because all of our spells require mana, even if they play, like, land go, we're not going to wasteland them. Just because, like, getting our, our stuff into play. Hey, look, now we don't even have to be incentivized to wasteland them. That is fun. So as long as they don't have triple paddle, we're in good shape. And so, yeah, we're going to have access to two cantrips on turn, uh, two counter spells on turn one, which is nice. One of them is hard. We're going to use this. We're going to be less likely to use this than to use this because this expires. And then on turn two, we're going to probably brainstorm and hope to not miss. It might brainstorm instep. You don't even know. Especially with the second one. I could be talking to brainstorming instep here. In fact, I could easily be talking to brainstorming instep. Which is not something you're normally supposed to do in Legacy, but the contents of this hand, like I should always want to hold up this spell pierce or this blast. Let's see what they do. If they, if they just play like land go, like fetch land go, probably gonna like brainstorm and stuff. Seems fine. Yep. Brainstorm. Opponent's like, wow, my opponent sucks. He's terrible at magic. No, like, I just think that we're not really gonna have time to cast this. Like, if we miss, it is so detrimental that I think it's worth spewing one of these on end step. And we have like another one. Are they just gonna counter it? There's no way they counted this, right? Spell pierce it. Can I please brainstorm? Oh, God. Um, put back... Bolt. Ponder, I guess. Ponder. See, look, we would have missed. Well, we don't know that. There's, there's still one card we haven't seen. We did make, we did hit our land drop, which does, which isn't irrelevant. It lets us play around uh, spell pierce, but we need to find a threat, and we need to find lands so we can like play threats and hold up counter spells. So, because eventually they they will be counter. Given the infinite time, sneak and show will be counter spells. Um, uh, we drew one of the cards. We're gonna brainstorm again. If 
the same reasons. Okay. This might get blasted, which is fine. Still, still puts a card out of our hand. Oh, God. Well, there's a threat. And we have one days. Jesus. Now we desperately need a land. Do I have eight cards in hand? I do. This sucks. I think we're supposed to move to discards. Could ponder. Might do that. All right. I'm going to ponder and hope to not die. They try to count us. We get to daze at least. Like even if they like blast it, we're going to daze to pick up our land. Yeah. So let's just pick up a land and hold up more counter spells. Fine spewing a card for that. Okay. It's countered. Nope. And. This is quite unfortunate. Go. Brainstorm on their end step. That's fine. I don't know why they need to brainstorm on their end step. It doesn't really make sense to me, but whatevs. Hopefully they'll think that this means we don't have soft permission and like draw conclusions from it, but they shouldn't because I would make a move here no matter what. I got days only to pick up my land so that I can hold up all these counter spells. And if we draw, like we're just looking to draw a blue red land, we know there's a lightning bolt on top. This soft permission is quickly expiring. Like, Spell Pierce is a little bit better, but, like, if we have to force negation, it's almost certainly pitching the stays. What you doing, opponent? We have room to draw the Lightning Bolt and pass, so, like, we have two turns of passing, and then we're going to bring some of the next end step. It's not that surprising that we missed. We did have two lands already, but, like, it is just, like, frustrating how much mana you need in this matchup, and, like, this isn't even a real threat. So, it's just very rough. Very rough how this played out. Wasteland looking pretty bad here. Opponent really on the tank on this Brainstorm. And, like, we're also getting a spot where we're going to have to cast multiple counter spells too, so, like, just playing the Arcanist won't even be good enough. They just have so much time. We are very likely to die. Man, that took forever. I mean, Brainstorm's a hard card, but there's technically only one card you even need to put back. It's probably going to be a Soul Land. No, regular land. Okay. Spell Pierce. So we can use the Wasteland as a functional daze if we don't want to force. Like, we can we can basically, like, Wasteland them, then daze. I think I might do that. Like, we, we can do the wasteland, day, wasteland Daze trick, and then we can... The thing is, that doesn't let us play Arcanist, and I really want to play Arcanist. <sighs> but I also really want this force. All right, well, we got the day's wasteland trick. This lets us get an extra force. All right, grab your land. You got it, it's countered. 
You countered it, big dog. All right, they have two cards in the end. Presumably one of them is a thing to put in off show and tell, so I assume the other card can't be that good. So we're going to pass. Um, we're not actually going to brainstorm and step here because I think we're in a much safer position. I think we're actually going to untap and just brainstorm. So we find a blue card, we get to force negation. So, yeah, I'm just going to untap and brainstorm. Oh, never mind. Now I'm going to play Arcanist. See, look, it also has that nice upside of you can occasionally actually just draw something you want to cast. There's a chance this gets countered, but I doubt it. This is this game played out basically. Oh wow! What did they pitch? Flusterstorm. Jeez, dude. Okay. I guess that's a reason not to be putting the counter spells in the stack like I've been doing. So I assume the last thing's a threat. Uh, so I assume they have creature plus X. Let's see what X is. X is nothing currently. Oop. Hey Reggie, thanks for the the host. I really appreciate it. How's it going? Um, now we're gonna brainstorm. That's a threat. Let's put this with this. I don't know why I did it like this, but whatever. Here's an Arcanist. All right, now we should be able to run away with this game. Hopefully. We have access to a singleton force. Brainstorm, okay. And they get to keep three cards, so they could reasonably have, like, show-and-tell creature. I guess they can't really have any counter-protection. I don't know what they could have. They could have, like, land sneak attack with counter-protection with a creature on top. That could be kind of frustrating. Would require us to find our blue blast, but... Glad I brought in the blue blast in the blind. I think they're always more likely to have sneak attack than not. Alright, them passing, I think, basically means we win. Okay, now we can get rid of this lightning bolt, although we may need it to actually kill them kind of quickly, so I might just brainstorm instead. Uh, actually, I'm going to target... Yeah, I'll target brainstorm. Cast it. Free cantrips! Wasteland doesn't really do anything. Don't want to shuffle away this lightning bolts. I wouldn't mind. None of these cards are very good. We'll find the lightning bolt later when we need it. Or we'll just find another threat. I think right now we just we're incentivized to just like find as much counter magic as possible and try to find more threats. So that's what we're gonna do. The bolt I don't think is like enough to really swing my vote. Okay, go. So we have Blast, Hardcast, Force of Negation, and Force of Will up. We have three counter spells up to your four cards. Let's see if we can get it done. Kind of want to blast this. I don't know. This is tough. Not going to. Like I said, I'm just trying to amass like a critical mass of counter spells, and like blasting this doesn't lend itself to that. Especially when they don't have a fetch land, they have no way to shuffle. Just feels like it is pretty free not to blast this. They've been taking hard on their brainstorms. I'm like four minutes ahead and I'm streaming. This is insanity. And I've cast more cantrips because I have uh, Dreadbird Arcanist. I'm surprised we won this game. Them going for the show and tell there was kind of loosey-goosey. Although they probably had that Fluster Storm that they were fetching to try to cast or whatever. And like, they got him with the, the daze trick. Ponder. Sure. I think I'm okay with this. This, this clears their brainstorm, but like, they're spinning a card to do it. Well, I don't actually spend a full card, but you, you get what I'm saying. They lose value. Like, their ponder is lower equity if they're just, like, because it's just a shuffle draw, and you know it's a shuffle draw going in, then, like, it's not a very high equity card. Like, I'm basically countering a, whatever, peer through mists or whatever. It's just, like, draw a card. I'm just not doing that. I'm not going to assume that their top cards are that bad. Especially when I have, like, an Arcanist running. I also just want to be able to protect this Arcanist at all costs. They chose not to shuffle? This is insanity. Am I wastelanding this? None of my counter spells are soft, so I don't think I am going to try to draw this wasteland. There's like a wasteland on top of my deck, and I just don't think I want it at all. 
Oh, I'll drop the other Volk. All right, threats. It's a threat. I'll take it. Um, so if we cast our young Pyromancer, that basically signals that this is their spot. But if we pick up a blue card off of our cantrip, what we're going to cast, which is going to be a brainstorm, I think, then it doesn't really matter. Um, and we want a token anyway. All right, I'm going to play the young Pyromancer. I might ponder. I think this is this is a spot where I'm actually going to flashback ponder with Threadward Arcanist. Just try to find a blue card to like pair up all these so we still have four counter spells up. Or three counter spells. I said four a second ago, didn't I? That was dumb. Ponder. Cast. Oh, he's healed. Okay. Let's find a blue card. These are all blue cards. Top. 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 Nope. All right, just put you to 13. Not going to tap any more lands. Okay, uh, go. And then if they ever go for it, we just make infinity tokens. So, like, they basically have to go for it. I think they have to go for it here. This is the most tapped out I'm ever going to be. And, like, I have a very relevant clock now. So they're going to they're gonna go for it here. I said spew. I think they're going to spew here. Uh, I think we lead off on the Force of Will because if everything clears, like the Force Negation is hard castable. So I think this is the worst counter spell, so we're going to lead on it. All right, there you go. Pitching that. And if they have Flush or Storm, that's going to be rough. They have their own Force of Will, that's perfect. Because that means this red blast has equity. Oh, this turns on their spell pierces, but whatever. They have to have a threat then. What they pitch? Spell pierce? Lol. So we just got to sequence things perfectly. I think this ends the game. Yeah. And see, now we actually have days and force of negation that we can cast in case we, like, you know, cantrip into a wasteland or whatever, and, like, that ends up mattering. Um. Let's just go to combat and attack. They're probably going to concede when they realize that this is kind of a lot of damage. Maybe not. Opponent plays on. Here's my... Activate my Jace the Mind Sculptor. Brainstorm. <laughs> my two mana Jace the Mind Sculptor that attacks for one. Oh, they conceded. All right, fine. Fine. All right, playing for the 5-0. Look at this. This deck's so good. This deck's broken. What's up, Mo? Yeah, Dread Bay is busted. This card is so ridiculous. It was so, so good. What'd you like to play first? Nothing would make me happier. Let's play. Uh, Sansip's great. Keep. I'm going to fetch an island and ponder, I think. What I'm looking for with that is a daze. Pairing, pairing days with Pyromancer is pretty nice. Also, like a backup threat in case you get discarded. Yeah. I'm going to ponder in turn one. Oh, we're playing against Ark. All right. Boop. Let's ponder. Hey, there's a backup threat in another land. All right, cool. Um, there's a chance I want the land. I think I definitely want these other two cards. So we're going to top all of these, and then we can decide on the land later. Let's see what Ark's doing. What are you up to? Probably Delvering. Although, they could be doing their, like, artifact nonsense that they tend to do. This is also my guy. I love him. Yeah, Ark's awesome. Absolute. Just a good, good human being. Hopefully, he's doing good human being things to me. Oh, no. Carrion Feeder? What the hell? Alright, fine. You got it, bud. 
I'm going to draw this lightning bolt and probably end up bolting this. I don't really know how my turn sequence is going to go. If they have Stitcher Supplier, I feel stupid for not bolting it. But if it's Stitcher Supplier, I think I'm just going to force it. All right, yeah. I think we want to get this going. I think I want a Young Pyromancer here. Because, like, I just want to, like, start amassing a moat that, like, attacks and also, like, throw away tokens for... Uh, Oh, it bleeped out WTF. Entomb? What? Uh, generally, you force entombs, huh? Generally, you force entombs. I think we're going to force this into. I don't know what he's grabbing. I have no idea. Ugh. So imagine you're porting Hogak to Legacy. You probably want to entomb a Hogak, right? All right, I'm going to force this. I don't know. I don't care. We're forcing it. All right. What do you have? What is your other card? Is it a Stitcher Supplier? Looting. Okay. I'll take that. We can Wasteland them. So we can bolt this Wasteland them. That's a pretty good spot to be in. Then we're going to have a lot of trouble. We do not have that much Graveyard Hate in our deck. Although Force Negation looks like it's going to be good against this deck. Two bridges. Jesus. Maybe we're bolting our own token. I think we probably are. Oh, you can just sack it? Oh, no. All right, fine. Make some tutus. You just have the whole gag anyway? What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Sure, dude. What the hell? All right. I thought there was 0% their hand was that good if they were leading on in tomb, but yikes. All right. Well, now I feel tempted to just Dreadhorde Arcanist. Plus, like, figure something out. I don't know. We have work to do. We have work to do. Legacy Hogak, huh? All right, all right, all right. Maybe I forced the wrong thing. Arcanist. Uh, go. Do not like the Walking Dead invasion. All right. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to pass. You're getting Hogak. I see this. Yeah, I don't think we can beat this 8-8. We can, but it's going to take some work. Cabal therapy. Yeah, let's just bolt my own token. All right. Rid of the bridges so they can't sack Hogak. I guess we have some blocking to do. Just another looting? Sure. Ugh. I mean, we're probably not supposed to win game one anyway, but I felt like we were in a good spot with, like, force and, like, all these threats. I felt like we were in a really good spot. It does not appear that we were in a really good spot. And we're dead to exactly two hits from Hogak now, too, because all the life we lost. This is going to be a lot of work. This is going to be a lot of work to win this game. But I think there's a chance. Bridge from below, Altered Dementia, sure. Attack with just Gackers. Yeah, I'm going to take my... Okay, that's kind of step one. That is kind of step one. All right, let's get, let's get them Wastelanded. True name played. Choose a player. I'm going to choose you. All right. So we can assemble seven power with a blockers. We're actually going to attack. Turn 
target this zombie. Make another token. Okay. Sure. So now we have five, six, seven. We're a point short of actually being able to kill Hogak right now. So it's gonna require some help. We're gonna need some more help. But for now, we're doing okay. We can give ourselves two points of life by just block blocking and hope to ponder into something relevant. I'm gonna give myself two points of two points of life to work with. Alright. Also sacks the bridge, which is nice. Oh no, they have an altar. Puke. Sure. Think that really does anything? Okay. So we can only attack with Arcanist no matter what. We need help. I don't know what it looks like, but I think it involves a lightning bolt. Okay. So we can make two more tokens and then we can chain lightning the zombie. That's big game. So let's put this on top, top, top. No. All right, so you block. Okay. I don't know if, I haven't done the math on this, but I feel like it has to work. It has to. Force of will. Uh, top. Top, top, nope, preordain. All right, let's draw this, let's bottom this, top this. All right, what do we got? We got five tokens. Do we have enough toughness to block this? Five, six, seven, we have seven to, all right, we have enough. So we just chain lightning this zombie and we're playing magic. We are playing magic. All right, yeah, sack it. You milled two lands. And now we can put everything in front of Hogak, and we go to one. Five, six, seven. Yeah, we can put everything in front of Hogak, we go to one. And they kill everything but true name. And then they need two creatures to recast it. We're in the game. We are in the game. <laughs> Why does this have triple? No, we're not dead. We're not dead. We go to one. Look at me. I have the galaxy brain for blocking last turn. Although we just have the token already. But they would have a bridge. Them not having a bridge is big, big game. All right, Ark. We're slogging. We're slogging through. I don't really have a great permanent answer to this Hogak, though. So, like, we need to, like, find cantrip chains. Or, like... I don't know. I don't know what else we can find. We're gonna have to find cantrip chains or something to like make a lot of tokens if we're gonna win this game. I hope they draw a fatal push. No, fuck you, Mikey. <laughs> I don't want to die. We're playing for a five-zero against my buddy Ark. Come on. I hope we draw a bunch of cantrips. Although we just went through a bunch of cantrips, made a bunch of tokens. What you thinking about? <laughs> He's taking his time to thank subs and talk about Star Wars. You've been dead for seven minutes. Oh, why am I dead? What the heck? Therapy? I was not doing anything. I don't understand how I'm dead. How am I dead? What the heck? Why am I being slow rolled? Okay. I don't feel dead. Days ain't it though. We can cantrip and then hope to hit more cantrips, but that's throwing away the Dreadheart Arcanist, which is our recovery system. I still think I'm supposed to throw away this Arcanist to cantrip. Is that insanity? 
Why does that feel like insanity? They have no cards in hand. How am I dead? All right. We're going to throw away this Archivist because we need to get something going. Target. Ponder. I would actually daze this, but I want to be able to... If they draw a land, I want to be able to daze their flashback looting. Alright. That would be a great time to play Vapor Snag in my deck, wouldn't it? Okay. Top. 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 No. Alright. That's, that's the beginning of this. That is the beginning of what this looks like. Here's a young Pyromancer. Uh, there is a Brainstorm up top of my deck. So we're going to pass, and then next turn we get to like probably fetch away this Force of Will and Brainstorm. Much Brainstorm. Carrion Feeder, what does that do? I don't think that contributes at all to anything. It helps them recast Hogak, I guess, if we have to trade our whole board. Um, I'm just gonna Brainstorm. I was yield. All right, let's make like a lot of tokens and see if we can start attacking with this true name. Dreadlord Arcanist, Lightning Bolt, Force of Will. Whoa. All right. So we can bolt the Carrion Feeder, and that doesn't really do anything. So we're going to hold the Lightning Bolt for now. I think we're going to go land Arcanist. Yeah. All right, this is eight tokens, so we're gonna go to combat, and we're gonna attack with true name, and we're gonna start trying to get them dead with our with our moats. Got a lot of moats. I think we have a couple turns before we actually just get to kill them with tokens. I'll have to actually do the math on their end step, and see if they're dead with tokens. Like if they cast a spell, we daze it. We might be able to actually just kill them with tokens. All right, well. No attacks. All right, what happens now? So how many tokens can we, we can like bolt them to 11, make two more tokens. Oh gosh, so much math. Make two more tokens. Cause everything's face up, right? Yeah, so we can bolt, I guess we can hold priority in days. So we can bolt, hold priority, days, pay the one. That makes four tokens, which gives me 10, 11, 12. They get bolted. Yeah, they're just very dead. All right, so I guess we're supposed to... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Begin sideboarding. That was an insane game. That is unreal that we won that game. That is unfucking real <laughs> yeah, I mean, him not attacking, yeah, just gave me so many tokens. But I mean, if you attack, then I just get free reign to crack back with my Arcanist for the rest of the game. Whereas, like, I had to throw my Arcanist away as it stood. I don't really know what my plan is to win this game. I'm not sure I can. I'm going to bring in these great cards and hope they're good enough. Um, Null Rod stops Alter, but I don't think Alter is even that good. Like, it's just not really that good. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that just means we want a braids. Eh, maybe we want a braid. I'll think about a braid. Oh, God. Maybe we want true name, too, because like, they tend to clog up the board. I don't know. We're going to figure this out. So, what sucks? Not in love with Sinkhole. We're on the draw. I'm not really in super in love with Days, but it's fine. Arcanist is okay, but not great. I'm going to cut at least one. I'm going to cut... We're on the draw. I don't think we really have time to preordain too much. So I'm going to cut like two preordains. Grimlava Mancer looks fine. Chain Lightning. I do want a critical mass of removal spells for my own creatures to get rid of the bridges, which is why I think I'm going to leave in all the bolts. And part of the reason I'm even considering days, to be honest with you. But like if we don't bring in a braids, like we have all these things that already counter uh, Alter Dementia. And we still have like all these cards I want to cut and these cards I want to keep. Mm. Bringing the true name is a little sus, but, like, it seems like it's really good in those particular spots where we need to be able to, like, block things well. Make it, like, they can make, like, a big carrying feeder, for instance, that we want to block. 
or they could like I don't know. It just, it could just, it just blocks very very well. Like I think we're gonna be doing a lot of blocking. Uh, maybe that means Delver's bad. I don't really know. I'm gonna try to figure this out. This deck is not in the guide. Time to rage quit. Yeah, Chad, what a miss. What a miss. Containment Priest wouldn't have done anything. Yeah, that's true. I mean, this is game one, so Containment Priest wasn't doing anything anyway. A Surgical to Force. <laughs> Snap Keep. You love to see it, chat. You love to see it. So we're likely Surgicaling only Bridges and Hogax. Therapy me. Okay. No matter what they name, they're going to hit. But that's all right. They just blind name Surgical? What a fucking master. Stone Cold Master. We have an Archivist. All right. Well, I'm going to find more permission. I'm going to try to find more permission with this Preordain. Island, Preordain. I guess I didn't need to fetch an island there. Lightning Bolt and Wasteland don't seem like it. None of these are permission. Looking for permission. Oh, that's a, card. That's a blue card to pitch, so that counts. That counts! <laughs> it's a blue card to pitch to whatever we're forcing next turn. Although, they probably are going to have to spend their turn like playing a creature and sacking to therapy me. Gosh, I can't believe he sniped that surgical. What a freaking master. The stream sniping? I don't think Ark would stream snipe me. That's fine. Maybe I should have forced that. I don't really know. Oh, God. I might actually just force this flashback. Grave crawler. We can't cast Hogak yet. All right, yeah, I'm just gonna let this happen. You can stack stack Stitcher Supplier. Bridge from below. Um, they can land next turn, which means they have a creature. I think they're just gonna take the force. So there's no need to force this. It does mean though that I think I need to play this Arcanist first. Brainstorm, deal. All right. All right, we're going to play Arcanist first, I think, because we can flashback Surgical, and so we can force the Hogak and then uh, Surgical it. So that seems like a good plan. So we're going to do it. That's, that's going to be our plan. They don't have a sack outlet currently. Um, obviously, we'll force the sack outlet if they play one of those. Ideally, they just like only have Carrying Feeder and we get to force it. All right, now we have to, now we have to kill the Hogak. What is this? Altar? Christ. I mean, we have to force that. Which means, once again, we have the stupid Hogak to deal with. This is frustrating. Yep. This sucks. All right. They have a carrying feeder too. Like if they have all these things, we're very dead. <laughs> sure. All right. I'm willing to call this one. I'm willing to call that one. They had all the things and we did not have all the things. Oh, makes me still kind of want null rod. I want the fourth days on the play. I don't want as many prudings on the play. Still worth considering Nora, but it hits one card. Maybe we want like a braid. Cut true name. I don't think I don't think both true names are necessary. We're not gonna be we're not as likely to be behind on the draw. So much legacy to it. Is there a legacy event people are prepping for? No. It's just like modern's kind of in a weird spot. Everybody's everybody's been streaming standard. Yeah, keep this. 
Has pressure plus dazes. I don't hate to see that. Um, so, yeah, let's play this. I'm going to fetch. Grab this. Here's this. All right. Yeah, no, we're not we're not mulliganing pressure with disruption. It's just not happening. Now, there is some thoughts about, like, what to daze. Like, are we going to daze this? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think we're going to daze this. Blood gas, blood gas. That's fine. We can raise blood gas, blood gas. No, I do not want to reveal that. That was a frustrating draw. Um, so we're going to play this flood strand. Fetch. From an island. Here's a pyromancer. Combat. Attack. All right. We got the pressure. They got blood gas that don't block. They're pretty far from casting a Hogak. If they have Alter here, it's great for us because we have Daze. I uh, think I'm willing to double Daze that. Yeah, I actually think I am willing to double Daze that. That to me is actually a fair bit scarier than the looting on one because it puts a creature in play. Force that by picking up my lands and making tokens. All right, we've committed. We've committed to a plan. Let's hope our plan's good enough. Gonna need you to flip, Delver. Damn. All right, well, Delver didn't flip. Uh, this is four, five. Yeah, I think we win this race currently. Go. That third land, I think that third land killed us. I think we needed our Delver to flip there to win this game. Unless, unless his hand is just, like, not functional. But I don't really see that being the case. Although, Blood Gas, Blood Gas were the best two things to discard. Sure, that is fine. My hand is bad. <laughs> nice therapy. Deal. Like, my hand sucks. Oh, Jake, I'm playing Modern Blue Red Delver Friday at FNM. I'm bored with Modern and Standard is kind of stale because the new set's weak. I don't think the new set's actually that weak. Oh god, they have bridges. This sucks. Whatever. Like I said, hopefully we can just hit some cantrips and make some stuff happen cuz his draw has been kind of slow. Like we got we got pretty lucky this game that we haven't like really gotten anywhere. We haven't really done anything. This hand has been very, very slow. Bridge from below. Yeah, now you can sack one of therapy, play a land, it goes back into play. So you get to take Dreadhorde Arcanist. Which I don't think is irrelevant. They played their land? What? And two. Oh, to go grab a second one? Alright, that's fine. Which means everything's on blocking duty. And we're gonna have to hope to draw surgical for bridges. This could be a Hogak. I'm surprised I'm surprised they did this. Cause I feel like you're supposed to go just go grab a Hogak and cast it. Instead of trying to make two zombies. Maybe that's maybe that's insane. Maybe that means they just have a Hogak in hand. That actually might be what it is. They probably just have a Hogak in hand. Oh no, if they have a Hogak in hand, they can sack and still play Hogak. That's disgusting. Alright, yeah, I think we've lost this game. Told you we needed a spell. Did not hit did not hit a spell. So they take Arcanist. And then they play Hogak, and then we die a lot. Oh, <gasps> they don't have Hogak. Bless up. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, that's what the doctor ordered. Play fetch land. So we could surgical lootings 
and hope their hand isn't good. We could surgical. We have a lot of surgical targets. I think we're supposed to surgical bridges, but if they ever hit a freaking Hogak, we're so dead. I think I'm just going to surgical bridges on their draw step. All right. Bridge from below. Make a token. They had one in hand? Oh my god, well, freaking gods, dude. Absolute gods. And their hand is like pretty bad too. This carrion feeder now does not look very good. Doesn't have trample, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So now we're in pretty good shape. All four bridges are in exile. And we are in good shape. That was a good that was a good blind draw. We did it. Good work, chat. <laughs> Alright. If they just attack with blood ghast. I think I'm going to throw away a token here and then two tokens here. Like, we're going to make more tokens. And they have a land to bring back the gas anyway, but it saves two damage. I think that's worth it. Maybe it's not. Now would be a good time to draw Trinity, I guess. Okay. I'm going to make this big. I mean, we have to draw spells in order for, like, us to continue playing, so. I like them. I like them using their resources like this. All right. We're playing magic. I need to stop my upkeep. Stop my turn. Spell. Delver of Secrets. No. All right. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Delver Secrets is is winning this game. I don't think Wasteland's winning this game either. Sure, we'll Wasteland you. Actually, that Wasteland didn't even do anything. I should have played a land to develop my mana so I could do better cantrip chains. I feel very dead. I feel very very dead. So we block here, take six. Yeah, I think we're I think we're very dead. Delver, you failed me. That wasteland was just kind of like pretty bad too. We tried. Both teams played hard. And that was like a really good draw. Gross. Two grave crawlers. Alright, you got it. We both played hard. We both played hard. Well, we got the 4 1. Not shabby, not shabby. Like I said, we <laughs> I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we were playing Graveyard Hate just to have Graveyard Hate and then uh what is that land they played? I don't know. I don't remember what that land was. Um guess we can figure it out, right? Oh, I don't know, we never saw it. Well I did see it, I just don't remember what it was. I've seen I think there's been decks that have played it before. It's just like basically an obvious combo card like land. But Obviously kind of lacking on Graveyard Hate, and it showed. Um, that hand I kept in game three, I don't really regret keeping, but I think that it definitely didn't pan out. We needed to draw, like, some cantrips or something to, like, make our pyramids better. And I did board out a fair number of preordains, so, like, there is plenty of argument for, hey, Drake, this is all your fault. Like, you boarded out the cantrips. But, like, even just, like, counter spells, anything any, anything to cast at all, like, Force Negation would have been a fine card. Like, I don't know. It's just, like... I think feel like there's a lot of a lot of spells that we could have drawn there that would flip Delver, even though I did kind of up the uh, up the count a little bit of or I'm sorry, down the count of spells a little bit. But in general I liked the list a lot. I mean we we kind of ran through a lot of decks that we lost to the graveyard deck, and like that makes sense because we're very light on graveyard hate. I don't expect people to be playing a bunch of graveyard decks, so I still probably wouldn't add more graveyard hate. And if I would, like it'd be like one more surgical. Like I'm not even looking to play that much more graveyard hate. I would just play more surgicals or yeah, like maybe some kind of ravenous trap if that's what they're doing. But the fact you can flashback surgical a Dreadhorde Arcanist is really, really nice. Um, 
I still liked the split on Magmatic Sinkhole. I don't think we ever actually cast it. Though there was one time that it didn't deal damage and that almost mattered. Like, if we didn't draw the Chain Lightning along with the Magmatic Sinkhole, it would have been bad. And we wouldn't have had the reach to finish off that Maverick player in that really close match. But I don't think that's an argument for not playing it, because Magmatic Sinkhole would still be pretty good in most spots. Um... Let's see. Anything else? Any other opinions? The Blue Blast was okay. We didn't really ever play the Mirror. Like, the Mirror was all over the place in um, in Pittsburgh. And we didn't really play it at all online. But the online metagame is kind of expected to be a little different. So, I don't I don't really regret playing it. No Rod was fine. Abrades were fine. The Forked Bolt, we never... No, we didn't bring it in. We brought it in, like, once, right? That's reasonable. I feel like we played a lot of combo decks. So, like... Some of our cards that are for the fair matchups didn't really show up too much because we just played against all combo. But overall, the deck felt the deck felt good. It's definitely still probably one of the best decks in the format. We won game one against Hogak and then lost both the Cyborg games, so go figure. But yeah, deck sweet. Um, don't really have too much else to say about it. I mean, like I said, I, it's what I would be playing in Legacy right now. Um, if I were to play another Legacy tournament, the deck felt super fun and it's really good. And I love my, uh, love my Delver decks, so... Big fan. Big fan. Uh, yeah. That's it. Any other questions? This is why you should play Is It Phoenix? That is not why you should play Is It Phoenix. Is It Phoenix would also lose to Hogak. Probably. I don't know. Probably not, actually. I did feel favored against Hogak. But not Legacy Hogak. You get Cabal Therapy. That card was ridiculous. Um... Yeah, so next league we're going to be playing the four-color Leovold deck, but before we go, I want to thank everybody that has hung out in the stream. If you like the content I'm producing and you have not yet followed me, please do so. It's the easiest way to support me on Twitch, and we'll let you know when I go live. If you're watching this video from YouTube and you have not yet hit that subscribe button, you enjoy the content I produce here, please hit the subscribe button. It's the easiest way to support me on YouTube, and we'll let you know when I post more videos. Other ways to support me, my stream, and Team Nova is to support my sponsors, which are now strewed all over my layout, um, so I'm going to try to go through them pretty quickly, and we are hopefully going to get the video updated, but all the links for all of these sponsors are going to be in the panels below if you're on Twitch, or on um, on YouTube, it will be in the description of the video, so the links to all the sponsors, as well as reminders for the codes, which is all code Team of MTG, super easy to use, but it should also have a reminder of what the code gets you, all in the panels below, or in the description below, depending on what platform you are watching on. Um, so going through them real quick, I want to thank Mage, one of the sponsors over there, ooh, there, <laughs> for sponsoring Team Nova. They are a, I guess they're a mobile app um, that you can download on your phone. It's probably the best Magic mobile app. It's definitely one of the be best put together mo mobile apps for Magic I've seen ever. And I actually don't know if I've seen a better one at all. And they have it on all the platforms and they're coming out with their uh, their Mage their Mage Market like uh I don't know, it's basically a StockX. I forgot what the name of it is, but it's like this StockX thing where you can like, you know, pay essentially what what is considered to be market price for your cards. It works exactly like the stock market does. So it's a uh, it's pretty sweet sweet app. It's something I wish existed when I was in college. And they have that coming out. You can check them out on Twitter. You can check them out, I believe, on Facebook as well. But yeah, their stuff's super great. We really appreciate their support. Introspective, you can see also right next to Mage on the right there, they are a clothing company that sponsors uh, Team Nova. They're the ones that I think put together the designs for our new jerseys, which look really good. So uh, we're happy to have them as a sponsor. You can use code Team Nova MTG for 10% off your order with them. They have some sweet clothes for you to look at, so check them out. Website below, you know where to find them. Uh, is the coast.com is our content production website. I uh, what is it? I plugged Chad's uh, Is It Delver article. So if you like this, like this deck, you're looking for Is It Delver content. Um, Chad uh, posted a complete guide on Hipsters of the Coast today. So today is July 3rd, 2019. You can go find the article from that date. Just says the complete guide to uh, Is It Delver. And he did consult me and Harlan Fuhrer, both of his teammates, when producing that article. So there's a lot of our all of our input in there. But ultimately, there's a lot of decisions that Chad liked going on. So check them out. They have a lot of other sweet podcast merchandise, articles, stuff for you guys to read. Doesn't cost you a dime. Check it out. Maybe get a little bit better about magic. You know, be entertained by magic content. Go figure. Um, and it does support Team Nova checking them out. So make sure you check out Hipsters of the Coast. Dot com. Also, Inkland Customs is the artist that has done all of the Nova tokens. You can see my token is behind me on the right. Um, and they did also the logo for Nova, which you can see right beneath my face, and the playmats that we use. So, you know, obviously her art is very, very good, and you can get custom art, you can get our tokens, you can get your own token made. She uh, has very reasonable prices and is more than happy to work with you and is fantastic to work with. So highly recommend checking her out. Link below. 
Check her out. She's awesome. The End Games is a store in Charlottesville that supports Team Nova. They rent us cards and give us cards at a discount. You can get that discount too using code Team Nova MTG for 10% off your cards with them. So if you're just looking to save some money on singles or on some sealed product, you can use that code to check out. The website's pretty easy to navigate and they are a local game store that is great and you should check them out and support the local game stores. And last but not least, we have Manatraders.com, which is the rental service I use for all of my you know leagues that I play for you guys. They have a lot of cards and stocks so you should not really run into any stock issues and they are back online they were offline for a little bit they are back online now and their bots are moving at normal speed you don't have to worry about waiting for your cards and you know you're gonna, all of you that are going to stick around on twitch you're going to sit out here in a second when i order the next deck but uh manager is great i've used them for years i used them before then i was sponsored with them before i was sponsored by them and their service is awesome I'm very very happy to use it and they even have a loyalty program for you if you uh you know stick around for a long time so check them out the prices are reasonable for what you're getting and you can use code Team Nova MTG for 15% off your first three months with them. So link below to get started. You obviously use code Team Nova MTG. You can save that 15%. And uh, yeah, thank you all very much. And I will see you next week.